Hey there, my name is Tiffany C, and I'm a UX manager here at Shopify. I've also worked at Shopify as a front end developer for many years. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use Git with Shopify themes, which allows you to record and track the changes that you make when working with themes on Shopify. For this tutorial, you'll already need to have installed ThemeKit and chosen a theme that you'd like to use with Git. If you haven't set ThemeKit already up with Shopify yet, you can go and watch Liam's video on how to set up a local theme development workflow, linked in the description below. You'll also need to have set up a development store so that you can grab the theme off that store to work with. So we'll begin today by taking a look at what actually is version control and what is Git, and then we'll get started actually installing Git on our computer and getting it up and running. We'll then take a look at some basic commands uh, like initializing a Git repository, um, making your first few commits, and understanding how feature branches work. Then we'll get into workflow and some gotchas. So thinking about uh, how to best use Git in your theme development workflow and what that looks like when you're working with other people and creating uh, new features for a theme for a client. Or if you're working on a theme that might be distributed to a bunch of different people and you need to keep track of versions and releases, as well as uh, things to think about when it comes to tracking files and that kind of thing uh, from the gotchas perspective. Then we'll jump into the benefits of using version control sort of as a wrap up, as well as any other resources that I think would be really useful for you. And what is version control and why is it even useful? So the first thing that you need to understand is uh, Git itself is a distributed version control system. Git is actually different from GitHub. GitHub is a website that allows you to upload your code uh, to it, um, but Git itself is um, free and open source and it itself is the version control system. So what that means is Git helps you track changes uh, to your code and collaborate with other developers. Version control essentially helps keep track of every change to your code in a special kind of database, helping to ensure that the changes that you make are tracked and you avoid sort of terrible things from happening. For example, if you make a mistake uh, after working on something for a really long time, um, you can turn back time, so to speak, and compare your earlier versions to the most recent one and help fix that mistake. It's also great for collaboration. One of the things to note about why Git is uh, great for working on teams is that it allows people to work in tandem on the same code base meaning that you can work uh, on the same project as someone else on your team, and then you two can merge your code together um, and resolve any conflicts that do come up. But Git is usually smart enough to figure out what you edited and what your teammate edited and merge those two things together with no problem. So what's great about that is it means that you can choose what to keep and what to discard, and you can work at the same time instead of having to only have one person at a time go in and edit the code base. Some common terminology that I think is really important for you to understand before we move forward uh, are a few key terms that I'll use over and over again. You've probably already heard me say the word repository a bunch of times. So a repository is the data structure and system that stores the history of your files and your code. For example, it's a set of files or code in a directory that's tracked by Git and that's considered a repository. Um, local refers to your own copy of that repository or the code that actually lives on your computer, quote unquote, locally. A branch refers to a copy of your code with a series of changes that are different to the original copy. And a merge is essentially what it means to combine your changes uh, to the code with another developer's changes or the original version itself. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is get started actually installing Git. Um, and to do that, uh, we need to check whether or not Git is already installed on our computer. In my case, I am using a uh, MacBook Pro. I uh, have Xcode installed, which is used to develop iOS apps. Um, but when Xcode's installed, Git is also installed on your Mac. So if you type in Git dash dash version uh, and hit enter, uh, you should see back um, what version of Git is installed on your computer. If you don't have it installed, uh, I've included links down below of uh, where to install Git and how to do it. Um, you'll get an error message that says command not found if Git is not installed on your computer. There are instructions on how to install Git for Mac 
as well as Git for Windows uh, just uh, below. One thing that's uh, important to note here is that if you haven't agreed to the user agreement uh, as part of Xcode, you might get an error message just saying that uh, you need to do that in Terminal. And so just make sure that you open up Xcode and agree to uh, the user agreement and then everything should be fine. All right, so now that I know that I have Git installed on my computer and working because I can type in Git dash dash version and see what version is installed, I am going to go through some basic commands. But before I do, I wanna make sure that um, you have ThemeKit up and running uh, with a uh, store. Uh, right now I have uh, my partner account and I'm logged in and I've created a store for this tutorial uh, just called Git for Themes. Um, and I've created a private app and set all of that up with ThemeKit. So I'm just going to run um, a command uh, here to download uh, the theme that's on that store um, to my desktop so that I can start working on it. First, I'm gonna make a directory uh, on my desktop. I'm going to call it um, Tiffany's theme tutorial. And so you'll see it's just appeared over here. You could also manually create that as well. Uh, and then I'm going to step into that folder. And then I'm going to run a theme get. And I've just saved the command here uh, just to go get my uh, theme uh, and download it into uh, this folder. So I'm just going to hit enter on that and it should download right away. Once this is downloaded, uh, we're going to go through some git commands. The first one that we'll be going through is uh, called uh, git init, which essentially initializes that directory as a git repository, meaning that like we're telling git to start watching those files for any changes um, and so that, that means that we can uh, create what are called commits, which are kind of like saves uh, to those files as we uh, make changes um, to the code. All right, so uh, before we start typing in any Git commands, the first thing that I wanna do is actually set up some, um, my identity uh, for Git um, on my computer, just like the global settings. So I'm first gonna type in git config dash dash global and uh, user dot name, and I'm gonna set my name to my name, Tiffany C, um, and then hit enter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with my email, dash dash global, and then user dot email, uh, and then you would put your email here, Jane Doe at gmail.com, or whatever email um, you might be using uh, with GitHub or um, Bitbucket or one of those other things. For now, uh, you can just put in uh, email if you haven't set that stuff up yet. Uh, we're not going to get to that in this tutorial on how to uh, actually get this up onto GitHub, but I will link to a full length a text tutorial that you can go through um, that does uh, discuss how to get all of this stuff set up. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, initialize our uh, local theme directory with git. Um, so what that means is we want git to start sort of like watching and and know that it's running um, and tracking changes that we make to um, the theme files in this, uh, in this folder. Um, and so right now I am currently in the folder. I can see that in my terminal window here. And once I'm inside my theme directory, I can type in git init. Uh, pretty straightforward command and just hit enter. Uh, and you'll see a return message that says initialized empty git repository um, and then with the directory. If I type in uh, ls-la and hit enter, you can see that um, this folder was created, this .git folder. And that essentially is what's holding, um, it's a hidden folder that contains all the information about your project that git needs to kind of work. So the next thing we're going to do is run a command called git status. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me know what branch I'm on, number one. Number two, it's going to tell me if I have any commits. And number three, it's gonna tell me all the files that I'm currently tracking or not tracking. Uh, in this case, it's listing out all of the untracked files. So to add all those files, I just need to type in git add, and then I'm going to put a period, which just denotes like all files in this folder, just hit enter. And what it should do is if I run git status one more time, you should be able to see all of the files that were now added to be tracked. 
And so these are all of the files that are in my theme. Uh, I just have uh, a regular copy of debut here um, that came with my dev store when I set it up. But now I'm tracking any changes that I make to that theme um, in all of the folders of that theme as well. The next thing we're going to do is actually uh, make a commit. What is a commit? So a commit is essentially um, a message uh, that we are going to give to a saved version of our code base. Um, so you can think of it like if you were playing a video game and uh, you wanted to be able to like uh, save your progress. This is kind of like how you can think of like git commits. Um, you don't want to create a commit for every single change that you make if it's really small, but you want to create a commit for meaningful changes. So say um, you finish um, a section of work uh, that you want to sort of like put a flag in the ground and, and tell um, other people on your team or even remind yourself what was the major change that you made or what was the thing that you worked on, that's a good reason to make a commit message. So in this case, we just added all of these initial files. So that can be our commit message. So I'm going to type in git commit, which is the command. And then I'm going to type in dash M, which stands for message. You could do this in a few different steps. I like to put this all in one line because I find it's a little bit easier. Um, and I'm just going to write add all initial theme files and then just hit enter. Oftentimes like you'll see like just initial commit as like the first uh, commit message. Um, in a lot of repositories, the first commit message is just adding like a readme file. In this case, we're adding all of these files. So I want it to be descriptive of that. And now I've added all the files. So I'm just going to drag my theme folder over to Visual Studio Code. Um, and it's just going to open up um, my uh, theme here so I can see all the files that exist in it. Um, this is the config file that was made for us by ThemeKit. Um, thank you, ThemeKit. One of the things that I want to talk about that I think is important to kind of just go over is ignoring files. So Git will track what you tell it to uh, and will also not track what you tell it to. So in the case of working on a Mac, for example, there's certain file types like invisible file types that we don't want Git to track. Um, things like DS store files or thumbs.db. These files are files that are created by like Finder that automatically are created uh, for little previews um, in Finder of like thumbnails and stuff. We don't want that to be tracked um, in our Git repository. And so we want to make sure that we create what's called a Git ignore file so that we can actually ignore the things that we don't want Git to track. So things like these files. So to do that, um, I am going to create a file uh, called dot Git ignore. So I'm just going to go into my code editor and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it dot Git ignore and hit enter. And you'll notice that um, I just have this file here and I'm going to uh, put in a couple different things. So these are specifically for my Mac, ds underscore store and uh, thumb.db. Uh, you can find a bunch of git ignore files uh, like default ones for different programming languages, uh, etc. On GitHub itself, if you just Google uh, Git ignore templates, you'll find a ton of them. Uh, but this is sort of the default one for Mac. Um, if you're using a preprocessor, uh, for example, to compile um, SAS for your theme, or uh, you're using something that generates like invisible files, you might also want to add those here as well. Now that I've created my file, um, if I just type in git status again, we'll notice that there is an untracked file, which is the new file that I created. Um, the difference between tracked and untracked files, tracked are the ones that Git is watching and untracked files are the ones that Git is not. So we need to add this file. Um, so I'm going to type in git add like we did before. Uh, and in this case, I can just type in dot git ignore. I could also just put a dot and it would add any files that I wasn't tracking already that is in the same directory. But in this case, I know what file it is. So I'm just going to hit enter. And then now that I've added my git ignore, all I have to do is commit it. So I'm going to write git commit dash M and I'm going to give uh, a new message. So I'm going to write add git ignore. Done. 
All right, so what happens if I uh, make a mistake? Let's say I did something, created a file, edited a file, and I wanted to undo that thing. Let's go ahead and like make a change to a file in here. Um, maybe we'll go into layout and into our theme dot liquid file. And maybe I'm going to, I don't know, by accident, like delete something. So like I by accidentally deleted the canonical URL um, and I by accident um, also committed that change. So I'm just going to write git commit. And in this case, I'm actually going to write dash a M, which is committing all the files and writing message at the same time. Um, and I'm just going to write like uh, update uh, theme dot liquid. It's a pretty bad commit message because it's not super descriptive. I made an update. I realized that I made a mistake. What do I do now? Um, and I saved it. This could have also been a mistake that I made several commits ago. The way that we find out uh, what is like the special number, or in this case, the hash that's associated with the commit that we made is we can type in something called git log. And so git log will essentially allow me to scroll through a log of all of the um, different commits that we've created so far. So in this case, I updated that theme to liquid, I added a git ignore, and I added all the initial files. If I wanna quit this like kind of scrolling thing, I just hit Q and now I'm out of this, uh, out of this bit here. Now that I have like the commit hashes, what I wanna do is I wanna actually revert my last commit or revert um, this commit right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this commit hash because I know this is the commit that I wanna get rid of. Um, it just happens to be my last commit, but even if it was like a few commits behind and I had made new commits since, I can revert just that one change or just the change that was committed in that, in that instance. Um, so in this case, to revert a commit, I'm going to write git revert and I'm going to uh, add in the hash right here. And if I hit enter, it just opened up Vim actually, uh, but basically it's asking me to like revert um, this. And if I, in Vim, I'm just gonna write WQ for right quit. And this is going to revert um, this commit message. And so it's created a commit message uh, for me um, that is actually reverting. So if I write git log now, um, you'll notice that I have a commit that says I reverted update theme.liquid. I have my previous commit to that, which was update theme.liquid. And I can continue scrolling down and see my added git ignore and added all my initial theme files. And so now if I go back to my code editor, you'll notice that the canonical URL is magically back um, because I reverted my command. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna cover is uh, workflow and some gotchas, things that you should probably be thinking about when uh, working with Git and Shopify themes. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is GitHub flow. You can Google that, um, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it's the idea of feature branches and using feature branches um, for uh, new features and developing new features um, while building a product. I'm gonna walk you through sort of like what this typical flow kind of looks like, uh, especially after uh, working with a lot of partners uh, and developers and knowing sort of like how they generally have things set up. This is sort of a high level overview of like what that could possibly look like. Um, in this case, we have an example store called the shoe store um, and it has a, a theme uh, which is tracked by Git and hosted in a repository on GitHub. Uh, there's also the actual live production store, which is the store that customers are actually going to that's uh, live and up and running. Uh, and then we have two developers, Sarah and John, uh, and they both have their own development stores. Uh, they both work for um, the company and uh, they're doing development work um, here and there on the theme itself. Because Sarah has her own development store uh, with her own partner account, before she starts working, she's going to need to pull the latest version of the theme to her computer from the code repo repository that she's tracking on GitHub. So um, that theme, the shoe store theme is actually tracked on GitHub. She would pull that down to her local computer uh, and 
make sure that she has the most up-to-date copy of whatever that theme is. One thing to note, and this is sort of like the main gotcha, is that it's important to make sure that you're tracking and and know whether or not settings underscore schema.json has changed. So one thing when you're working with clients, especially clients who have access to their own store, um, is that if they've made changes to that store and the way that it looks through uh, the Shopify theme editor or the online theme editor, they might have made some changes. And what that means is settings underscore schema.json might be updated. And so the version that you have tracked on your GitHub repository or tracked by Git um, might not be the version that's actually reflected in production. And so the other thing, uh, and this is sort of like a gotcha that we know just from talking with uh, other developers and partners uh, who build themes, is that um, Sarah would then also want to grab the latest theme from production and make sure that there were no changes made by a client or someone else on the live store that she might not be aware of. Somebody might have made a change uh, on that uh, live production site um, that wasn't reflected in the GitHub repository. And so she just wants to make sure that um, she runs a command called git diff to see if there are any changes, compare those changes um, if there are changes, likely uh, they're probably in that settings underscore schema.json file. If they're in other files, that means somebody's been editing uh, in the online code editor, likely, or uploaded a theme that did not have the proper commits um, and synced to GitHub. Uh, but anyway, she wants to make sure that she is going to track those changes and make sure that she has the most up-to-date version um, of what should be on production. And so Using git diff, she can compare any changes, potentially commit those changes and push them back up uh, to the repository that's hosted on GitHub um, for the whole team, for John, whoever else, uh, to make sure that they have access to. Now that everything's up to date and tracked, uh, she can make a new feature branch for the work that she's doing on her development store. So she would have her own development store. This is different than working on production. You wouldn't want to work on production because um, that's a live site. Uh, and we don't want to do that because the likeliness of something breaking is pretty high, especially as you're doing development changes. And so she would have her own development store that she's working on, create a new branch. And if you're interested in understanding branching and pushing to GitHub and all that kind of stuff, you can check out uh, the article that I mentioned about Git and Shopify themes uh, linked in the description below. But she'd make her changes to uh, her branch, commit those changes, and now uh, once everything's up and ready, um, she can merge those changes uh, back into the main branch of her repository um, once they're reviewed by maybe team members or something through like a pull request. Once that code's reviewed and she's merged her changes back into the main repository, then she's going to go ahead and deploy her changes to production. Um, and she can do that in a number of different ways. And depending on your setup and depending on uh, what makes the most sense for uh, you and the company that you work for, uh, that might be using ThemeKit to deploy changes uh, and basically send a copy of whatever theme you have on your computer uh, to the live store um, and then uh, set it up as a preview theme, make sure that it's working and then publish that theme. Or the other thing that you could do is use a third party tool like Beanstalk or something else that uh, can track changes and deploy to Shopify stores. And I've seen um, a bunch of different uh, tools for that, again, listed in that article that I mentioned. Uh, the other thing to note is uh, something called Git Flow. Uh, Git Flow is not the same as GitHub Flow. Um, Git Flow is a little bit older. It is the idea, if you just Google, you'll find it. I've also linked it a longer description uh, in that article that I mentioned. But Git Flow is great for um, when you're thinking about doing releases of a theme. So if you're planning on selling a theme in some capacity and you have to do different versions of that theme, uh, the idea behind Git Flow is that your team works uh, and does like features off of a development branch. And once that development branch is like up and ready and has enough sort of like updates to it um, and new features, etc., then you can create an official release um, and tag it and release it as a version of your theme. Um, and that's a pretty typical kind of uh, understanding. Uh, we have theme partners uh, that work with Shopify and have uh, themes on the theme store that use this exact thing. Again, all in that article that I mentioned, but I won't get into it too much here. And finally, to wrap up, I just want to sort of review the benefits of using Git. So if you haven't already, 
realized. Uh, it's great for tracking your work. Git helps you to keep track of the changes that you make in a meaningful way with Git commit messages and gathering a history of those changes with the ability to track those changes across versions. The other benefit of Git is that it allows you to collaborate really easily with teams. So Git allows you to more easily collaborate with others while you make changes to your code. Uh, creating branches and building with distributed development make it a lot easier to combine code with others, and Git is often smart enough to merge your work with other developers' work um, quite easily. And finally, Git is really widely used and has a huge community. Because Git is so widely used, using it will equip you to likely work in a lot of other team environments, not just the one that you might be joining. And because there's a huge community uh, with platforms like GitHub and huge open source communities everywhere, the number of users make it really easy to resolve issues and seek outside help uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot uh, different problems. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. We upload videos every week to help you with your development work on Shopify. And remember to check out the links in the description below, uh, especially if you want to learn more about uh, GitHub uh, or if you want to use the GitHub app for Shopify themes, um, there's a longer form guide in the description. Thanks so much again. Bye-bye.